where each node contains both a value, possibly some other values as well, as well as a pointer to the next node in the list. Um, it arranges itself into a linear data structure. The way that a linked list is interacted with from the perspective of main or whatever function is using the linked list, it looks like just a pointer to one node, right? It's a pointer to a linked list node, and then you're expected to just know that there are more nodes that are probably connected on the end of it, right? The last node in the chain will point to null, so it will have its pointer intentionally set to null. Um, so uh, if we are following the nodes of a linked list all the way on through, it's important at each step to check to see if the next one is null, because if it is, you're on the last node. Make sense? Good. <clears throat> Lists are uh, very, very, very common, linked lists. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> um, some languages, this is how they store almost everything. The list type in Python uses this type of construction, all right, uh, in order to store its, 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 value, uh, its values. The tuple type is something more similar to the array type we've been dealing with so far. Um, some languages like Lisp and Haskell, uh, they only use lists as their primary aggregate data type. Um, have you ever heard of Lisp? Anybody? It's a really old language. It dates back to the 60s. Um, like, this is a pre-C language, right? Um, lots and lots of parentheses. Uh, Lisp stands for List Processor. Um, in a lot of ways, Haskell, which I'm sure I've mentioned before, is, you can think of it as a successor language to Lisp. Um, but Lisp, um, it still kicks around in one way or another. Uh, for example, um, anybody heard of Emacs? I must have mentioned Emacs a couple of times. Emacs is written in Lisp. Uh, Emacs is the text editor that thinks it's an operating system. So. <clears throat> So the advantage of the linked list over the array, right? First, well, how do I want to start? Let's, first of all, talk about the downsides. And then we'll talk about how singly linked lists are superior. So <clears throat> with respect to the amount of time it takes to find a value at a particular index, right? We should all know by now that to look up any particular item in an array is a constant time operation, right? Because it only requires a small amount of arithmetic. You take the pointer that starts the array, you calculate the offset, and then you dereference that value. That's all you need to do. Array access is constant time. Um, <clears throat> with respect to a linked list, access time is proportional to the number of items in the list. So we would say it's linear access time. The reason for this, the exact location that any of these nodes are stored at in memory is unknown from the perspective of the uh, entry into the data structure, shall we say. <clears throat> so, if this is our hard disk, we would have node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, etc., etc. Uh, well, let, you know what, I'm going to put 0 in there as well. So 0 points to 1, 1 points to 2, 2 points to 3, and 3 points to 4, right? The actual locations in memory of any of these nodes are unknown. <clears throat> and that's fine. In order to find the fifth, uh, you know, in order to find the fifth item, you have to start at your starting point 
and follow the arrows around through the data structure until you hit the value you're looking for. This is also known as walking the data structure. Right? So, because accessing any particular item is at, like the worst case scenario is you're trying to access the last item, the tail, right? <coughs> In the worst case scenario, the number of elements you have to go through is the number of elements in the data structure. So that's a linear number, so it's linear access time for a linked list. Does that make sense? So far so good? Okay. So that's a lot worse than arrays. So one might ask the question, why on earth would we ever use these things? And the answer is because certain other operations become very fast. <clears throat> the nodes of a linked list may be put in any piece of memory within the, you know, the bounds of what the, what the operating system gives you to play in, right? So, in order to insert an element into a linked list, all you have to do is find the position in that linked list where that element should be, and then move some pointers around. So let's say we wanted to add 1.5 to this, right? We might have, we ask for a node to be uh, m allocked, right? We allocate a new node. Let's just say for the sake of arrow convenience, it's right there. We take this pointer, we reassign it to point at the new node, we take its old value and point it to where it was pointing before, bing, bang, boom, insertion performed. If you're inserting at the beginning or head of a list, this is actually a constant time operation. Right? Otherwise, it takes as much time as it takes to find the correct position plus, you know, two more operations. Make sense? So, <clears throat> lists, then, are commonly applied when you need a dynamic data structure, right? When the, when the size of the data structure itself is frequently changing, the way that you want to do that is using a dynamic data structure, such as a linked list. Make sense? Cool. So. The nodes of it, the graph, then these are graphs, they're just very simple ones. <coughs> the nodes of a graph can be expressed as objects of a structure type in C. All we need to do is take an existing structure and add the self-referential pointer next. So while many of the examples that I do on the board, etc., will have just single integers indicating the node number, you must, like, in your brain, understand that I might be putting we might we may we are permitted to put quite a lot of data inside of a node rather than just the one bit, right? So the last element in the list points to null. If we wish to refer to a singly linked list in main or one of our functions, we need only a single node from which we can access the rest. All the stuff I've already said. If we apply our data structure to the singly linked list structure that we had previously, we get the following. You see we have fields for name, email, and pinball on each of these nodes. Each node also has a next pointer pointing to the next node, and the final one points to null. Make sense? So far so good. Question? Are they lists like directional? Can you start at a node later on and work your way back, or is it always? Not with a singly linked list. So we're getting there. But with a singly linked list, let's say that you were here. It is impossible to know where this one is relative to this one. The pointer points this way, not the other way, right? <clears throat> Let's say you are at this node and you imagine this is all of the information I have to work with. 
what is the memory address of the previous node? It's not recorded, so you can't know it. The only way to get to the previous node is to know what index this one's at, and then do a retrace from the beginning to find that index minus one. That's the only way to do it. Or I suppose you could like, you know, you could save two pointers, one to the previous one and one to the next one, check to see if it's the one you're looking for, and then take the previous one. You can like trace through it and do it with pointers instead of indexes as well, but in both cases you have to start from the beginning. Make sense? Good. So, the more information that is contained in the data structure, the more advantageous it is to organize it in this manner. Consider the passing of arrays, right? When we pass, like if we pass stuff by value, right? We have to copy all of it into the function. That takes time. If we're sending it a referential link to a data structure, we literally only send a pointer. It's much, much, much faster. Right? Um, also, there's the issue of trying to expand an existing array. Right? So, I've probably done this demonstration when we talked about uh, realloc, but I'll do it again for you guys. So, let's say we had a region of memory. Right? Um, I'll sort of divide it in two. Let's say this is used. We have a foo array that comes up to there, and um, maybe a little bit of blank space, and then another x. Used memory, used memory, foo. Right? We can only expand foo so much before we are intersecting used memory. If we want to expand, if we want to reallocate this array to be larger than the size of the memory in which it can possibly exist, what we have to do is we have to copy it to a new region of memory right, that accommodates its new size. So we would say, you know, copy that down here and expand it, right? The size of the, sing of the singly linked list, or any linked list structure, in order to add new information to it, we do not have to resize all of these nodes. We do not have to move or touch any of these nodes. All we have to do is allocate one new node for every piece of information we're adding, right? These guys tend to be very small in comparison to the data structure itself. You might imagine that a linked list containing 100 items, right? each node is of a size 1 100th of the overall data structure. right? So it is very easy to find open slots in memory for these things. right? Um, and you don't really have to worry about resizing them either. They simply come into existence, and if you want them gone, you delete them. And there's no resizing problem with them whatsoever. Right? Um, because again, we have decoupled the idea of the data structure itself from storing it in continuous memory. There are advantages. Again, you have to pay for it in terms of access time, but often it's worth the, it's worth the exchange. Um, does that make sense? Okay, cool. So, good. Um, if you want to pass the first node by reference to a function, keep in mind that within the function, you will have to dereference the arguments to get the first node's data. So please understand the difference between a reference to the first node in the linked list and the first node in a linked list. But uh, you guys should be veteran referencers and dereferencers by now. Question? Yeah, um, when you make a new node, do you still have to, like, uh, explicitly say, like, an unlock for the node? Or is it, when you create the node, it's just automatically allocated to the node? Um, creating, so when you create the 
Okay. So this is the whole process, right? Let's say we wanted to add a node on the end here, right? So four, it, th that's currently a node containing four and a pointer to null, right? Step one, we m alloc a new node structure. So that, you know, we'll call it five. We m alloc that. The m alloc function returns a reference to the newly allocated memory. You take that number, you assign it there. There's no need to store it in a temporary variable. You can if you want to, if it like pleases your sense of hygiene, you can, you can store that in a temporary variable. But you can actually just directly use the output of the malloc operation to do that. You know, although if you do that, you're, you're perhaps not checking to see if it's null, uh, to see if it was, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe it's better to assign it to a variable so you can check to see if malloc gave you a null. But malloc, like, very rarely gives you a null, but you know you, your system has to actually be out of memory. But you know, anyway, you know what I mean. It's safer to check. It's always safer to check. Any other questions? Yes. When you're um, when you're like allocating new space for the uh, for the new node, you like the point the pointer that's associated with that node is automatically sent to null. Hmm. Uh. Nope. Uh, newly allocated memory uh, junk data. So uh, that's, yes, thank you. That's one other thing you have to do is you have to manually assign this to null because otherwise it might be three or seven or a large number. Did you have a question? Yeah. So when you're creating each structure, do you like manually put in what the next pointer is? Like what next is or does it, like how does it know what next is in each of these cases? Um, that's a good question. So the structure definition itself only says that it has the next pointer itself, yeah. right? It doesn't, um, yeah. So essentially, the issue here is that every time you add a new node to the data structure, you have to perform these certain operations. If you are consistently performing these operations, that will take care of the pointer um, issues as they arise. So by the time you have added all of the nodes, um, everything's correct by construction. Does that make sense? Like you would never at any point go through each of these nodes and like mess with all of the pointers at once. Like how does the next node point to the next one? Because you assign it to that. Yeah. When you Okay. All right. So, C code then. So, let's say, so we've got the SLL node structure, right? So, let's just say up top we've got an SLL node um, linked list, All right? Um, let's just assume we've done stuff with that, populated it, etc. Um, let's let's prepend. Let's add a node to the start of the linked list. That's a little bit easier, right? So <clears throat> SLL. Actually, this would be a pointer. Yeah, SLL node. Um, new is equal to um, m alloc, um, you know, size of uh, SLL node, right? So far, so good. Um, we say new dot next is equal to linked list 
um, <coughs> adds a pointer to it. So he referenced linked list dot next, right? Then um, linked list is equal. Uh, linked list itself, the pointer is the address of new. Right? So this is what this operation looks like. Linked list is a pointer. Right? It's pointing to this node, let's say. <coughs> this line declares a new node right there. Like not spatially, but in terms of, you know. Um, new.next is equal to this. Wait, I think I made a mistake. Because that would be this guy, actually. All right, I made a mistake. Yeah, just a linked list. There we go. So the value of this pointer, see, this is why it's always you should always draw these things out. When you, whenever you're working with pointers, do a little diagram. It helps tremendously. Do the address of linked list or just? Um, no, it's already a pointer to a node, so uh, you don't have to take the address. Um, so you take the value of this pointer, you assign it here. So now this thing also points this way, right? Then you take the reference to the head node of the linked list, and you reassign it to the address of the new node, and that performs the expansion. Does that make sense? Any questions? You, sir? Um, so in the new.next, would that be the reference new.next? Or would it, because didn't you make a pointer in the malloc? Like, that's a pointer, right? Um, <coughs> new is a pointer? Implicitly, yes, but also no. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a pointer in the same way that arrays are pointers. Oh. So, um, no. <laughs> okay, so the compiler takes care of that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's like you should think like the, the, the analogous situation was would be something like I said, int, who, etc. And then I said, you know, down here, who at three, right? Equals seven whatever, right? It's like this thing is considered to be a pointer to some region of memory, right? That's also true here. New is considered to be a pointer to some region of memory. The difference is that it's of a heterogeneous data type rather than a homogeneous data type. And it's accessed through the individual members. Does that make sense? To an extent. So then, why do you have the address of new below? Um, I should probably run this through the compiler, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's take a look. Although I do try to be a perfect avatar of GCC, um, I do not always live up to those expectations. Let's just make it as simple as possible. 
Let's see if the compiler complains about this much. Oh, I need no. I um, I need to uh, import um, the actual library it's included in. Mlloc is in standard lib, not standard IL. And also, let's see here, invalid initial library. Brackets. Brackets, square brackets. It's recursive, baby. At next, at next, at val is equal to t. 
15, and one clicks at next, at next, at next. We'll set that equal to null. All right. Now let's print that list. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Let's see how many mistakes I can make in one example. Okay. Um, so the mistake that I made there was I was returning if the pointer is not null, otherwise I was printing the next of null, which is, I'm surprised that one didn't say fault, actually. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, so, um, just a couple of notes and then I'll answer your questions. From a practical perspective, this is obvious nonsense, <laughs> right? This is like, this is not something that you would do unless you're writing test cases and you don't want to give away how it is that a student might go about writing like an indexing function because you want them to write it. So that's why this type of thing appears in like some of the assignment questions. But uh, you know, you know. Um, <clears throat> ooh, I should probably uh, I should probably take a look at those assignment questions and you know, when's assignment five due again? This Sunday. This Sunday. Fourth. Fourth? Yeah, okay. Is it? Next, 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 next weekend? Okay. Um, ah, pointer. That's pointer talk. Um, so, uh, A4 was due, like, this last Sunday. Oh, okay. So, our, so we're fine then. We're fine. Okay. Um, because I'm, uh, if this. I'm not supposed to actually say what I'm going to do if the strike is on, because according to the administration, I'm supposed to ignore that the strike is even happening. But um, if there's a strike, I have nobody to mark the, uh, the assembly questions, so they're going to be struck from the assignment. Just so you know. If there's a strike, yes. But that changes the margin. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That, that will change like how much the assignment is worth, but it will not change what the assignment is worth in terms of your final grade. You'll just not have those questions. I still recommend them, especially if you want to do stuff next semester in a course that requires it, but I have no physical capacity to mark it, so that's how that's going to go. Anyway, um, so obviously this is nonsense and not the way that anybody would do anything practically. Um, you would have a function that would perform a walk of the data structure and then insert the node at the, uh, you know, like you would have a second argument here that keeps track of like how many nodes you've passed through and then once you get to the node you want to, re to insert, you then perform the, 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 the functions that you wish. This, I'm pretty sure these are directly assignment questions actually. So um, there were questions in the room about this. Yes? What's the difference between doing dot next versus the arrow next? Uh, arrow next is dereferencing as well as uh, member access. So because LL is a uh, is a node, right? Um, or pardon me, because LL is a link, a link, uh, it's it's a it's a pointer to a node. 
rather than just being a node itself. Uh, examples of, let me just quickly pull up an example where we didn't use a pointer to designate uh, something like that. Right? So this is using a structure without a pointer. Right? Notice no star, right? We, we're, not for, we're not allocating this memory using malloc. It is static. It's a statically de declared structure. So it only exists inside of main, right? It's being stored in stack memory. We can just access with dot syntax. Everywhere that you're using a pointer to a data structure, you're going to have to use arrows, right? It's actually pretty easy to, like, you don't necessarily even have to hard memorize that because you should just gain the habit of, like, if you see, you know, uh, assignment from incompatible pointer type in, uh, as one of your compiler warnings, just, oh, I must need an arrow there and just put an arrow in instead of a dot, right? Like, the compiler is there to help you, all right? Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir? Do you have to, like, free every node afterwards? Yes, which I'm not doing, so I'm a bad person. Like, how does that work? You have to use the, the next stuff and then the next stuff? Yeah, you have to destroy it from the, you, from the ground up, or from the end forward. So destroying a linked list and freeing it in its entirety is basically a reverse traversal, um, now which can get very expensive on a singly linked list because, again, to get to the previous node, you have to go through the whole thing again. But just a preview of coming attractions, folks. Uh, you can doubly link them. Look, you can have pointers going backwards as well as forwards, and that solves many of the issues that are inherent to singly linked lists. Any other questions? Well, I mean, um, You'll, be, you'll do whichever one the assigned question asks for. Uh, yeah. uh, generally speaking, it's really not that much more memory for a